Today we're going to be doing some fantastic stuff in Geometry Nodes using some very simple proximity. So what we have here is this ball that kind of goes back and forth through this tunnel and it kind of makes it expand out. And we're also going to be changing the color or the material as it goes through. So you can see the final result here looks absolutely fantastic. I really think you guys are going to enjoy this. Very beginner friendly and it's all made in geometry nodes. And the cool thing is as well, once you know this, you can use it for all sorts of other applications. Now, those of you supporting the channel on Patreon, I will be uploading this original blend file to my Patreon. Those of you who are not on the Patreon, you can still watch this and make it. It's completely free to um, follow along. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so we have a new scene open up in Blender. Let's go ahead and select all the default objects. We'll press delete on our keyboard and we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna add in a mesh object. We'll go for a cylinder and we're gonna go RY90 and hit enter. So RY90. This way it's lining up with our X axis. We're then gonna go S, X and scale it along the X and we can go for something about this much. You can have it however long you want. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode and hovering over one of these edges, you're gonna go control R and you're gonna see a yellow line appear and you can just roll your middle mouse button and that just adds in more segments. And I'm gonna go over about this many and I'm gonna double click. And now you can see we have all of these little squares. It doesn't have to be exact same number of rows as me. Um, just you know, go for anything like this. Something similar should be fine. Then select the ends and go X and delete the faces. And this one as well. You just want to open cylinder like this. And then you want to actually go tab back out into object mode. It's important. And then right click and go shade smooth. And then also very importantly, you want to go control A or command A and you want to apply the scale and control A again and you want to apply the rotation. Okay, so now we have this over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our geometry nodes workspace. We're going to click new to create a geometry system or net node network here. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and we're going to capture an attribute. And the attribute we're going to capture is going to be the position. So we're going to go shift A. We're going to go search. We're going to get a capture and get a capture attribute. Let's put it on here. Let's change it to face since we're going to be working with the faces and we want to go shift a search and we want to get a normal and get a position. So type in position and just grab that and then plug the position into this slot over here. And then what we want to do as well is we want to go shift D to duplicate this capture attribute, place it on here. And then let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and drag on this position and we'll get the normal. There we go. And this stuff will make more sense later. But then we want to also set the position because we're going to actually take this thing and distort it as an object moves with it. And we'll give it some proximity data. So what we're going to do, we're going to go shift A, search and get a set position. Grab the set position, place it on this cable here. I'll just move this so you can see here a little bit better. So this is what we have so far. And now we want to do, we actually want to distort it with this offset here, right? So what we can do is we can first of all add in an object that we want to use as a proximity object. So we're gonna go shift A over here, we're gonna go to mesh options, add in a UV sphere. We're gonna go S to scale it down like this and click. And then we're gonna go control A and we're gonna apply the scale. And then let's go G, X and kind of move it here to the front. Like so, we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. Then let's click on our cylinder here. And then let's come up here to this sphere in our outline. Let's just click and hold it in and drag it and drag it here into our scene, our, our node setup here. And we want to set this to relative because the proximity is going to be based on the relative location here. If you didn't have it, it would just kind of keep the distortion here in the middle of the object. It wouldn't matter where we have it in the 3D space. So with that done, make sure you have your cylinder selected. And we're going to go shift a search. We're going to get a geometry prox and get a geometry proximity and the geometry we're working with is the sphere we dragged in so let's drag that into the geometry and the position we want to sample is this attribute that we captured here which is the position of our cylinder okay that's what it's going to be sampling it again so we're going to put it here into the sample position and then what we want to do we want to do a bit of a math operation we're going to go shift a search and we're going to get a math get a math node 
And let's take the distance and we're gonna go ahead and divide that. So let's change this from add to divide. We're gonna go ahead and divide that with the scale of the sphere, like so. So if we were to visualize that, so if you go shift control and you just left click on the set position, you can get a viewer node. So let's just plug this value into the value here. And you can actually now see that this is creating this gradient. So if I grab this, in fact, for that not to happen, just make sure you click on this pin here. And now when I grab another object, you can see our geometry stays, nodes stay here. So if I go G, X, um, okay, you're not seeing it. So I gotta just enable the viewer again. So you can see here, if I move that sphere, this is what's happening. We have this sort of gradient here. So it's working, but we need to dial it in a little bit. So let's go shift a search and get a ramp. Let's get a color ramp and place it on here. And we really wanna tighten that up. So I'm gonna drag this black value way up, but I want it to be a bit smoother. So I'm gonna make it B spline. Gonna take it all the way up to the end here. And then I'm gonna grab this white value and I'm gonna make that a little bit darker like so, a little bit more into the gray. So now we have a little bit more, um, so the black areas are gonna have less influence and the lighter it gets, the more influence it's gonna have on making this sort of blow out. So now we have some data that we can use on our set position. So what I'll do, is I'll delete this viewer node and I'll plug this color into the offset. And you can see it's now distorting, as you can see here, there we go. But to kind of have this thing not step like this, like it's doing at the moment, what we can do is we can go shift A, search, and we can get a vector math node. So type in vector math, and then place it on just underneath the set position here. And then we're gonna go shift A, search, and get a math node, just a normal math node. Let's place it here next to the color ramp. So the ramp is actually going here into the value. And then what we can do is we can multiply that so let's put it into the bottom input and we can multiply it with that normal position that we captured here. So let's plug that in here. And now if we plug this in here, it should be centered. Now the only thing here is that it's a little bit um, too large on the scale. So what we can do, we can control this value here. But for now, I'm just gonna set it to zero, but it does give you the opportunity there to kind of slide that around if you need it to. I guess that it kind of gives us a way to control the thickness of the tube. But the main thing we really wanna focus on here, if I actually move this sphere in here, like that, um, this is a little bit blocky, so I'm just gonna grab that, and I'm just gonna try and smooth it out a little bit, and kind of just grab this value here and just kind of smooth it out. This is personal preference, it isn't really right or wrong here, but you kind of get the idea here like that. So it's looking pretty cool. It's just a nice sort of smooth effect. There we go. Cool. Now this is all cool, but it doesn't look that interesting just as an expanding cylinder. So to make this look more interesting, what we wanna do is we actually wanna come here to the front and between the group input and the capture attribute, we wanna go shift A, search and get a split edges, place it on here and now it's splitting all the edges. And to make this look really cool, go to your uh, modifiers and go add modifier, search and type in solid and get a solidify and then give this some thickness like that. Okay, now this looks a bit messy, so what we wanna do is we wanna come over here and go Shift A, search and get a set shade smooth, place it on here. And now that you've added that set shade smooth, you could turn it off like this, the shade smooth, so you're gonna have like the sharp splits. But what I like to do is keep that in place, but I'm gonna come over here and add modifier, search, I'm gonna add in a bevel. And now we can kind of fix that by just kind of giving these guys their own bevel, so something like that. Now you can see that's looking really cool. So there we have it. So now let's go over into our render properties area and let's go to our render engine. Let's change it to cycles. Let's take the device to GPU. That's only if you have a GPU. If you don't, don't worry about it. And then we're gonna go down to the render max samples. Let's set that to 35. And then let's go into our layout. Let's come over here to our timeline. Let's give ourselves 100 frames to play with. We'll grab our ball here and we're gonna go G, X and move it out a bit. And let's come to frame one and frame one, we're gonna go I and insert a keyframe. Then we're gonna grab that same keyframe. We're gonna go shift D to duplicate, take it to frame 100. That gives us our two hold poses. So this can be a loop. Then let's come over to frame 50, enable auto keying and let's go G, X and just move it all the way back here and click and then turn off auto keying. Then grab all of these guys and press T and make it linear. 
So what we have now is this. And then it comes back like this. Pretty cool stuff. So now let's go Shift A. Let's go to our mesh options. Let's add in a plane. Once we've added in the plane, um, I'm just going to go move it over here to the front so we can see. You're going to tab into edit mode, go to your vertex select option, and then go Control Shift B or Command Shift B. That's going to allow you to bevel these vertices and then roll your middle mouse button to add in segments. Click and then press A to select everything. Go E to extrude up and click. Tab back out and then let's give this an array modifier. Let's give it a gap of 1.01 and give it a count of like 10. And then let's come here to the drop down. Let's duplicate that and let's come to the duplication, make it zero at the top and on the Y we'll make it 1.01 .01. like so. And now we have this floor, which we'll add over here, which is kind of like in the middle. We'll just move it down a bit like this. And then let's also just come over here to our modifiers and just give it a bevel and just kind of tune that in a little bit. Right click and go shade smooth. Or maybe right click and go shade auto smooth if that gives you a better result. We're gonna find a position we like. We're gonna go shift A, add in a camera. Let's move in the camera like so. And you could just move your camera to whatever position you like. It really doesn't matter. I like a focal length of about 120. And I'm gonna zoom right back like so. But like I said, the camera positioning here is gonna be completely up to you. But I like to go with something it kind of looks like this. I think it's just kind of cool. Now with my original one that I did for Instagram, I went and made it just kind of like the same sort of aspect ratio. So it was 1920 by 1920, but this one I'll leave like so. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our light options, add in an area light and just move the area light up. And let's give it a strength of 200, increase the size. And now if you go Z and go rendered, you can see this is what we have. I might just bump up the strength. And then you can duplicate your light. Kind of have it coming from different positions. Completely up to you, but this is what I'm gonna go with for now. And now the material part, this is where things get really interesting. So if we grab our um, cone, our cylinder here, we can go over to our geometry nodes. Let's go to our materials and go create a new material for that tube. Let's just call it tube. And let's come here to our set shade smooth. Afterwards, we're gonna go shift A, search and get a set material, add it on here. Then come here and give it that tube material. And then before the set shade smooth, let's go shift A, search and get a store named attribute. And this is important that we go for the named attribute because we wanna capture this as a float and let's just give it a name. Let's just call it um, color. And um, if you're in Australia, like I am, you can spell it the correct way by adding in AU or you can spell it just C-O-L-O-R. So what we're gonna do then, is we're gonna take this value from the add, we're just gonna take it and drag it, and drag it right here into this value. So now if I actually visualize this, and you don't have to do this, but if I actually view that, you can actually see this is what we're capturing, this attribute here. And we can use that to create a mask to um, display two different materials. So the way we're gonna do that, is we're gonna go into our shading workspace, and in our shading workspace, we're gonna go into our camera view, go Z and go rendered. And then let's go shift A search and get an attribute in our, whoops, attribute. There we go. And let's just get the name here, which is color. Make sure you spell it exactly the same way that you did in the geometry node system. And then let's take that factor and plug it into the base color. And you can kind of see this is what we have there. Pretty cool. But what we wanna do that, we actually wanna mix that. So we're gonna go shift A search and get a mix shader place it over here. And then what we can do is we can go shift a search and get a glass. And let's plug the glass into the bottom input here. And then let's duplicate this mix shader. And with this glass here, we'll make our own little shader down here where we'll actually mix an emission with it. So we're gonna go shift a search and get an emission. Plug the emission into the top, the bottom one into here and then give it a value of 0.95. And then let's give this a color. I like to go with something like this. You can make it any color, but I'm gonna give it a strength of five. And then once you have that made, what you can do is you can come up here and you can actually take this factor and plug it into the mix of this mix shader. 
And you can go Shift A search and get a ramp. Grab a color ramp and place it on here. And now you can really tighten up these values like so until you kind of have whatever you're looking for. So now you can see this is where that material is because this ramp, so wherever it's lighter, we get the glass. Wherever it's not, we get just this normal white material. Okay, so you can kind of mess around with this however you want. It's really fun to play with. I might just um, give it a little bit of roughness on the glass. Might be bump up the factor just a little bit here. Maybe bring down the strength of the emission or maybe take it up a little bit. You can play around with it all you want, but I think my lighting here is just a little bit too strong to get that sort of full effect. So I'll just kind of move it over a little bit. I might just mess around with this a little bit more, but I think you guys kind of get the idea here. It's a lot of fun. So what we're gonna do, we'll just kind of go back to our layout. Let's just grab a shot that we like, something like this. Let's go render and render the image. And there we have it. So this is the tutorial. Now, my exact file that I have here is the one I'm gonna be uploading to Patreon. And this is my original, and it's the exact same thing pretty much. Um, obviously, I've tweaked the lighting a little bit more and the camera angle, but it's the exact same thing that I've made. So go ahead, play around with your lighting, try it out. But for those of you who are on the Patreon, you'll be getting this exact file here which is exactly the same thing that I've shown you how to make. Um, so yeah, that'll be on there. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate any likes and subscriptions. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.